Very good. Hi, thanks. Hola, hola a todos. Well, welcome. Yes, of course. It's one of your uh, one of your your the home language. You can speak uh, speak the language here, so we might do a little bit in Spanish as well, which would be uh, which would be fantastic. There's so much to talk about coming into Spain. Uh, I feel that a lot of the teams have been talking about upgrades, and it's now our turn to put on most of the upgrades for a race. We've got a few new pieces on the car, and we've had the very first free practice one to have a look at them. A lot of work goes on behind the scenes to get these upgrades uh, ready for this the, the, for this race. What does it what does it look like in free practice one? Are we happy? Yes, basically the, the, those upgrades were supposed to come for Imola, but because of what happened in Imola, we couldn't bring them in Imola, you know. So to be honest, this is a track that it's probably easier to really do a, a, a car comparison. It's a very good technical track. It's good. I mean, I just came back now from the garage. They are putting the upgrades, if I was not mistaken, in both cars, which is a good sign, which means they did work. So uh, yeah, they, they are very visible. You know, sometimes you bring, you bring great which you don't see them so and they have a big impact you want to see very often you see very clearly because they are on the side pods. side pods of a car is probably the thing that stands out the most i say this because it doesn't necessarily mean it's a big performance upgrade but we are working towards the race you know that's why we we're bringing our upgrade not so much for more performance but more more drivability let's say on on race days yeah, we talked about that a little bit on stage here in Free Practice One. What makes a great qualifying car versus a great racing car? It is obviously the same car because we can't touch the car after qualifying starts. But we've generally got a, a great qualifying car. We're very, very good over one lap pace, but we've been struggling a little bit in the races. So what exactly are we trying to, to achieve in, in that race pace? Well, first of all, it's not something you look for. It's not, you don't design a car thinking, I want to have qualifying pace. You design the car, to be good all days and then when you start the season then you realize where you have some uh, areas that you have more margin of improvement so straight away we could see in Bahrain first round three Charles would have done both he even saved a set of tires and then you know we've been super fast on qualifying and then we saw that we didn't have the pace of our competitors on race day so why is that probably because what happens from qualifying to race the only change really is fuel you put 100 kilos of fuel, 110 kilos of fuel. When you put a lot of fuel, you could think that the car gets lower. But it's really not that, you know, because when you put fuel, you go so much low that by going slower, the car is even higher because the wind is pushing the car to the ground, you know. So there is, let's say, when you put fuel into the car, there is a right height change. And basically, we, we think that on qualifying, we have a right height that will, our car is very performance. We go to the race day, and then we lose this performance, you know. And the car is here with the mistake from Charles in, in uh, back, back, you know, in back in Miami. It's very picky, you know. You know it's very easy. when you lose it, it doesn't warn you. So it's again, it shows that it has a very small window of operation. So we're trying to make that window bigger. Therefore, on the race, you put fuel, and the car is still better, you know. It's not easy to do that, of course. I'm spending. I'm not an engineer, but more or less, that's what happened. And, and that's what we're doing, you know? So we're bringing updates to make sure the car is not so picky. We, we keep the performance, but we, we broaden it. So we can use it more in any condition. And we are working on that. It's not an easy task, but that shows the car has potential. That's the main thing. But we're not always able to use this potential, and we're working on that. And when we talk about potential, so much of a Formula One car potential comes from the floor. And we don't get to see that much until Sergio Perez Monaco, yeah, crashed Monaco. in Monaco. <laughs> and then <laughs> how's it went over well? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was a, a photographer's delight. There was a lot of people, uh, and I'm assuming that Ferrari's had a look at the, the floor there. We didn't have to show off our floor, which is fantastic. But is there is there such interest in, in, com in competitors' floors in Formula One? Do you think that, I mean, obviously we can't just bolt on a Red Bull floor and expect it to work on any of the other teams, but was it of interest to the engineers downstairs? I don't know, but my experience says probably yes. Of course, it's, as you say, it's part of a package. You could not put a floor and our car would be quicker, you know, but it's something that teams take very secret. Let's imagine the car stops on free practice in Bahrain in February. Mechanics would come and always wrap it up like, a, like it's a present, you know. So to be able to get such a good picture, and nowadays those cars, they are, they are delivering so much performance and downforce from the floor, a lot more than from the wings. So I, I'm sure Red Bull were not happy, that's my opinion. 
they would say probably ah, we're not worried about that. But uh, yeah, I'm sure they were not because as I say, on a normal private test, they would have not have shown it. And let's let's now talk about performance in free practice one and, and two. So we've got two coming up in 15 or so minutes. Free practice one, we had to run the, the Pirelli test tire, so that was probably a bit of a mixed order. What what was the word downstairs? Yeah, the Pikni tire is the hardest compound, it's called Proto, it's just a different construction that it would be implemented in, in Silverstone. Um, it just gave us an extra set of tires, basically, you know, but I think we were quite okay. Of course, Red Bull are the team to beat, no doubt about that, but our drivers were quite happy with the balance of the cars, from what I heard. So it was, it was a fairly positive Friday FP1. The one we're going to start now is more important, you know, the first part is going to be qualifying. Everybody's going to go with low fuel, maybe this 5-10 kilos difference amongst the teams. And then, second part, everybody goes with very high fuel, very little difference on fuel. So, whatever you see on pure uh, lap time, it's more representative. The only variable today from tomorrow is going to be engine mapping. How much power do you produce from the engine? Normally, we are quite conservative in that respect. But let's say the lap time is going to be more representative of what we see now than what we saw just before. But my feeling is our car is going okay and the drivers are quite happy with the balance. And of course we've deleted the chicane, so oh. first time since 2006 I think, and uh, in that free practice I think Max nearly matched Fernando's 2006 qualifying time. Uh, so what the drivers, is there any feedback from the drivers? We, we saw that some of the other teams are complaining that because now the final turn is so much faster there's a bit of balancing, but our cars look fairly good through there. Yeah, basically, much more fun to drive the car now, for sure, you know, drivers love it like that. I hope for overtaking is not any worse. I would even think maybe it's a little bit better. The turn 13 is flat, not so difficult to do it flat. Turn 14, no. You know, turn 14, there's a bit. I don't think anyone will do it flat tomorrow, we'll see. But it's a challenge. It's really a corner that it's almost flat. And the bouncing that you see before turn 14 is because there's a little bump. And then that bump creates a lot of bumps. You know, it, it goes into like a, an oscillation and you cannot stop. Much better, much better circuit as it is now. I just hope the race on Sunday is good for the show and they'll keep it because the chicane before was horrible. I can tell you it was, it was, it was a disaster basically to drive, you know. They did it to make more exciting. The only downside of this new layout is the pit entry is super fast now. Mm, I don't know if the world would be dangerous, but it's very fast. But everything else I think it's a plus, you know, so I'm very happy they went back to the standard. Just for the neck as well. The neck now it's really, really heavy because you go two corners consecutive. It's like six seconds doing more than 3G without resting, you know. And, and physically on the race day, I'm quite sure you'll see some people re leaning their neck on the left, you know. I'm, I'm, I want to see the last 30, 40 laps, we'll see who is the fittest because I don't think you can do at more than 3, 4Gs for six seconds every lap, you know, it's very tough. Just had just before you were on stage, we had um, Carlos's performance trainer, uh, Rivet Man Waring, was up here. And, uh, so if you do see Carlos leaning on his neck, you can go and say that he's not doing a, a good enough job of training. Yet. That's fantastic. And what, what do you think uh, tomorrow? Is it too early to predict what we think uh, we will be able to qualify? It's too early. Anyway, top four. We've been always top four almost all season. So for me, that'll be a good result. You know, we have to aim for on Sunday, but uh, top four, I think. So first, first two rows. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to let you get back down. I know that you've got a lot of commitments uh, ahead of this session. Ladies and gentlemen, please, big round of applause for Mark Janay. And we've obviously got, uh, yeah, free practice two coming up in about uh, 15 minutes time. And as we've just heard from the man, a very important session. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Thank you.